Today's going to be a very confusing lesson, so I need you to make sure you're going to focus. The first part is review. I'm not even going to record that. Okay, last week we talked about the associative and the commutative properties. And the associative property that I tell you my little trick about friends? No. Okay, well, the associative property says that it doesn't matter how you group the numbers, and this is when you're multiplying or adding, okay, because it's not going to change your answer. And so I thought, how could the kids remember associative property? And so I came up with this little friends idea. You associate with your friends, so you might want to be around them, and sometimes friends hug, and that could be the parentheses. Yes or no? Yes. Could that help you remember it? You associate with people you like. Sometimes you hug people you like. Those are the parentheses. I don't know. What's a commutative property? <laughs> What's a commutative property? The numbers switched around. Yes, and I kind of did this with my hands, didn't I? Mm -hmm. The old switcheroo, the numbers are switched around. And that works when you're multiplying and when you're adding. You can move the numbers around and you can group them any way you want. But this property is different. This property says we're going to decompose things. Okay? That means break them apart. So the distributive property, here's how we would use it. Now, Notice that we already know the answers. So let's just write all the answers down. 9 times 3. 27. Okay, 7 times 4. 9 times 6. Wait, what? No, no, 54. 54. 8 times 2. I went backwards, didn't I? Okay, so get the answers out of your head. That's not why we're doing this. Okay, I'm teaching you a strategy. Here's what it looks like. Let's just say this problem is too hard for me. I'm going to break the 9 apart into 5 plus 4. Go ahead and write that down. And then I'm going to add 5 plus 4, but it's going to look differently. So look, how, look at this before you write anything. 5 plus 4. Okay, just watch me. What am I multiplying by? Three. I'm going to multiply both of them by 3. Now this is the distributive property. I can break these digits apart into smaller digits so that I could do the math in my head or so I can figure out things that are too difficult for me. So now I can do 15 plus what? 12. And what is 15 plus 12, boys and girls? 27. Okay. Now, I know you don't need the distributive property to figure out these answers. We're just practicing this strategy. What number would I break apart here? 24. The 7, and we're going to break it apart into 3 plus 4. So now, are you writing this? Yes. Okay, I'm going to add 3 plus 4. Put the plus sign's in the middle right there. And then what am I multiplying by? Four. Four. So I take both numbers times four. And I get 12 plus what? 16. And 12 plus 16, I'm pretty sure, is 28. Okay? Now, we'll use the distributive property later on in the year several times. And the way it's different than associative and commutative is that I am actually changing the multiplication and addition signs, aren't I? I'm adding an addition sign. This one's fun. What would I break 8 into? 4. So go ahead and add 4 plus 4. What are you multiplying by? 2. So that ends up being... 8 plus 8, and the answer is, you knew it, didn't you? Take a look at the next one. What will we break 9 apart into? You could. Here's what I want to do, though. I want to keep the numbers as close as possible. 
five and four. Let's just try it with three and six and see what happens. Okay? Three plus six. There's no rule that says you can't do this. So now I've got three plus six. And what am I multiplying by? So three times six is? And six times six is? And 18 plus 36 is kind of hard to add. 54. Yeah, 54. It works. It does work. Here's how I want to show you what, what it looks like. How it looks if I do five and four. You don't have to change yours, but just let's just say I did five and four instead. So this would be 30 plus. Is that easier to add? Yeah, yeah it is. Okay? So it's not going to give you the wrong answer, but a lot of times if you keep those numbers as close together as you can, it's going to be easier to add. Okay? All right, let's take a look at... If, if, we, if we did that, those problems on a test, and we did something that's not postponed to put a you can't No, as long as you use the distributive property and you got the correct answer, that's all I'm asking for. Okay? okay? All right, so let's take a look at this problem here. Um, you got some boxes on yours, don't you? Okay, I'm just going to guess here. Okay. So Robin is 11 years old. Her mother Gwen is two years more than three times Robin's age. How old is Gwen? Now, Gwen is not 13. So get that number out of your mind first of all, right away. Okay? This to me looks like one of those problems that doesn't make one bit of sense. So we're going to use tape diagrams to organize the information. Start with what you know. What do you know? Uh, Robin is 11 years old. Okay, write it down. Okay, and we know that Gwen is two years more than three times Robin's age. So think about that for a minute. Now I'm going to tell you something that I want you to remember. When you have a chance, I want you to multiply before you add. Okay, so think about what we should do next. Should we add two or multiply, multiply times, times three? three? Okay, Ella, so how would I show that on this tape diagram here? Make it into three. Make it into three boxes. And what will I write in each box? Eleven. So now I'm ready to add two. How do I know I'm adding two? Because Years two years more. So I'm going to add one and add two. I'm just going to write it up there. So what do I do with these three elevens? Three groups of eleven, right? Whoops. Three groups of eleven plus two. What's the answer? Um, 30, 35. 35. What happened to my plus sign? Mm -hmm. Equals 35. Okay? Now, how can I write this in an expression with parentheses and I can't use the number 33? What did I tell you to do first? Multiply. So what number are we multiplying by? 3 times 11. And then what? Plus 2. Plus two. Write it down. So this tells me I'm going to do what's in parentheses first. Okay. And then I'm going to add. Now the lesson, t so when is 35 years old, which makes sense. Okay, the lesson today deals with expressions and modeling the expressions. So let's start with the first three problems. Now, boys and girls, this is, one, this is a pretty confusing lesson. 
So you really need to focus. You're doing a good job, but I, I really need you to watch what I do. Okay? Can you do that today? Instead of writing what I say, watch what I do and then we'll write it. Okay, so this says 3 times the sum of 26 and 4. So I'm going to cir circle a couple words. You're watching? Okay. I'm going to circle this word and this word. Now, why do you think I circled those two words? Ella? Tells us what we're going to do. We're going to do what? Multiply and add, right? Multiply and add. So, remember on the last page that I said, if you have a choice, multiply first. Okay? So how would I make this take diagram show the multiplication portion of this expression? What's it say? Three times. So how many equal boxes do I need? Three. Three. You guys all knew the answer to that. Why didn't you say it? I know. Get them on there. Okay. And make sure you go ahead and circle times and circle sum. Write your multiplication sign. Write your addition sign. That's going to come in handy when we get to the next step. Okay? So don't skip that. So now that I have three times... How do I write that in an expression? Three times. That's it. Three times. So now, what's left over? The sum of 26 and 4. How would I show that? Sum is telling me I'm going to add. Go, go ahead and change it, Kaden. 26 plus 4. Just put it down right there. Now, there's a reason why we're putting it underneath, okay? And you'll, we'll get to that in a minute. So how do I take this 26 plus 4 and put it in my numerical expression? 20, okay. no, 30. No, I can't use 30. I, need your I think we're going to need our parentheses. Who said that? Bella. Good. What are you going to put in the parentheses? 20. 26, 26 plus 4. Now, if I wanted to get the answer, that's where the 30 comes in. Could I write the 30 down? Yes. But 30 is not part of the expression. It's part of the answer. Okay? So, my answer to this is what? 90. 3 times 30 equals 90. Okay? Now, a lot of times, boys and girls, you don't even have to solve these. You just get to tell me what to write or tell me what to draw, okay? So, take a look at number two. Six times the difference between 60 and 51. I'm going to circle two words again. Times and difference. And difference. Times tells me I'm going to do what? Multiply. Difference tells me I'm going to subtract. Okay, get that written down. So it's very similar to number one, except you subtract, and it looks like we have different numbers. So starting with six times, what does that look like on a tape diagram, Aubrey? How many boxes? Six boxes. So start with that, get six boxes on there. How does that look in a numerical expression? Six times. Okay, go ahead and write that. The, the rest of it says the difference between 60 and 51. So go back up to number one. Where did we write the sum of 26 and 4? Right underneath the box? Mm -hmm. Let's do that, that with this. Instead of addition, what will we do? So 60 minus 51. I don't know why, but when I when I make my page go down, it takes things away for me. 
So Aubrey says, get your parentheses on there. What goes in the parentheses? 60 minus 51. Now here's a really easy way to figure out the answer. What's 60 minus 51? 9. Okay, so what's the answer? 9 times 6. 54. Okay. Now we're going to come back to these problems when we get to the next page. Because we're going to look at these words that tell us what to do, and we're going to use these to figure out something else, okay? So it's very important that you go ahead and circle and make these notes. Okay, the sum of two twelves and four threes. So circle sum? Circle sum. Now, that seems a little odd to me that there's no other operation in here. So, well, let's think about it. What is two twelves? 24. 24. So how'd they get that? 12 times, or 2 times, or 12 plus 12, right? But any way you look at it, you can multiply that times 2. So how, what would 4 threes look like then? 4 times 3. So go ahead and put those notes above it. And I know you're already thinking about, how am I going to draw this? How am I going to draw this? I want you to start with the easy part. <clears throat> Four groups of three. And we're going to put it at the end. So make four boxes at the end and put three in each one. I shouldn't hear your pencil or whatever that is clicking around over there. And I just did four threes. I just put it on my tape diagram. Do you see that I did that? And we already said that looks like 4 times 3 when we write it out. We'll use that in a minute. And what else do I need on my tape diagram? Two twelves. Two twelves. Just, split just split it in half. That's why I had you start with the threes, because it, then you could just split what you have left in half. Okay, so now I need to put this down as a numerical expression. And I know I'm going to add, what, what do you think I should add together? The, 12 and three. the two twelves and the four threes. How do I write that? Three times. No. You have to, you have to add them. I have to add two sets of parentheses. What goes in the first parenthesis? Twelve, twelve. twelve times three. Twelve. two groups of twelve. Seven, twelve. Two twelves. Keep them in the same order. Okay. And what goes next? Four groups of three. Now, to solve it, I can do 12 times three, can't I? What is 12 times three? Start with the three. 36. So to solve it, I could do 12 times three. But to write it, I had to write it with those two expressions. Okay, now I know you're a little confused, but it's going to make more sense when we get to the next one, okay? All right, so let's keep going. Now we have to come up with the words to match this. So out to the I know, out to the side, make yourself a tape diagram. Do you have one? I know, just out to the side. Don't, don't go down to your line. Keep it up. I'm going to write underneath this here. Should I make myself a line? Well, of course I should. There's a line for me. Okay, so let's think about this. What does it look like on a tape diagram? How many boxes? Okay, that's simple enough. And what do I write under the first box? Minus 13. And I don't care what the answer is right now. Do you? Okay. So let's go ahead and let's find one from the first page that has a multiply and a subtract in it. Everyone turn over 
point to the one on the first page that you circled or that you wrote down, multiply and subtract. Well, it's not really the first page, is it? It's the other page we just did. Okay? So, um, I want you to point to it. Is it first, second, or third, Corbin? It has multiply and subtract. Okay, read it to us nice and loud, Corbin. Six times the difference between 60 and 51. Okay, he said six times the difference between 60 and 51. That's what the other page had. You don't have to write that. How can we have this be the same wording but with different numbers? Ella's going to give it a try. Eight Eight times the, which word tells me to subtract? Eight times the difference of, or is it between? It's between. Between. And. 13. Eight times the difference between 43 and 13. How do we figure out what to write? We used one from the other page. So we kind of copied it. Is that a smart thing to do? Yes. It's use what you know to figure out what you don't know. Let's take a look at the next one. Okay. What two operations do you see here? Plus and times. Okay, plus, plus and times. How about addition and multiplication? Yeah. Okay, so what word will I need for addition? Some. Some. And what word will I need for multiplication? Okay, go back to the other side. Point to the one that has some and times in it. Jesus, read it to us. Three times. A little louder, please. Three times. The sum of 26 and 4. Okay, three times the sum of 26 and 4. Well, we got a problem here. Uh, this, this expression isn't starting with multiplication. So I gotta leave that till the end. So all I have to do is start with the sum. The sum, you can do this, the sum of what? 16 plus and 16 and 9. And how do I write multiply it times 4? Times 4. All right. Ready for the next one. Okay, what are we going to circle here? Multiply, multiply, addition. So, I know for sure that's sum. What, which one have we not used from the other side yet? The third one. Fernando, read the third one to us. The sum of two twelves and four threes. The sum of two twelves and four threes. Could I do the same thing here? Yeah. Well, instead of two twelves, what do I have? Twenty threes. And instead of whatever that other was, what do I have? Five threes. Okay, so here we have the sum of... 23s and 5 threes. Okay, 
So now I want you to think about this problem right here. And I want you to rearrange the problem. Put the plus sign somewhere else. Put the multiplication somewhere else. Any ideas? Want to talk about it with your table group? I want you to rearrange this problem and move the plus sign. It's kind of backwards from the distributive property. Okay, so talk about it with your table group. Move the plus sign, move the multiplication sign. And I'm going to give you a little hint. Did you look at the hint I just put on the board? That's going to help you. Okay, so anybody ready? Yeah. Robert, what do you guys think? We think if you get the answer for both multiplication problems, then um, multiply it. Okay, so you're very close. I'm going to take these two numbers right here and I'm going to add them. Can I do that? Yeah. I can. It's going to it's going to be less steps. What's 25 times 3? Oh my gosh, what's three quarters? Three quarters out of a dollar? 25 cents. So 25 times 3 is 75. 75. Now, Robert and Corbin were saying do 20 times 3, which is 60, plus 15. Is that also 75? Yes. So can I rearrange these numbers? Yes. As long as I know what I'm multiplying by. I'm multiplying by what in this problem? Three. Three. Okay, look at the next one. This is doing the same thing, but we're... We have to decide which one's larger. This is really fun, okay? Yeah. So 9 times 13 could also be said as 9 what? Nine thirteenths. So eight thirteenths could be written as. So which one's larger? Nine thirteenths. By how many? By one. By one thirteenth. Okay. So we didn't need to solve that, did we? No. No. And my goal is to not solve it unless I need to. So let's take a look at the next one. This says the sum of 10 and 9 doubled. So, so first of all, what does sum tell me I'm going to do? Add. Add. And doubled. Multiply. Multiply by two. by 2. Multiply by 2. Write those down. So the sum of 10 and 9 doubled. So first we're going to add plus nine the 10 and 9. And then we're going to multiply by 2. Go ahead and write it down. Good job. Is this getting any easier? Mm -hmm. It will be by the end of tomorrow. Okay, so I noticed something here. I noticed that all the numbers are the same on both sides of that circle. So here's my advice, and I want you to listen to it. If you notice that you have all the same numbers, but they're in different order, and you're not sure, and you can't figure it out, just solve both sides. So get an answer for both sides, and don't tell anyone what it is when you get it. So figure out the answer to 10 plus 9 times 2, and figure out the answer to the other side, and see what you get. Go ahead and do it now with your pencil. Okay, so what's 10 plus 9? 19. 19. 19 times 2. Is 38. 38. And if you had two boys and girls, is this okay? Yes. Yes, get, get the answer with the standard algorithm. Okay, so what's 2 times 10? Uh, 
20, 20 plus 18, 18 plus 38, 38. equal. So if you don't know the answer by just looking, what's your best bet? Solve them. Solve it. Okay, solve both sides. Now this one, we're going to draw something on. Yes. And I want to teach you how to draw a tape diagram. And you might already know, a tape diagram where I don't want to draw it all. So give me a nice long tape diagram. About as long as the phrase here, the expression. And I want to draw 30 15s on here, but I don't really want to draw 30 15s. So I'm going to show you a trick. Are you ready? Okay, it's the dot, dot, dot method. And so on and so forth. Wait, are you ready? I'm going to put about three at the front and two at the end. And I'm going to leave the rest with dot, dot, dot. Just leave it blank. This works on anything. Any big number. Then I'm going to, are you ready for this? Yeah. One, two, three. How many boxes did I need to draw? Thirty. 30. Right? Is that what my problem says? So I'm going to do 29 and 30 on my last two. So it looks like I have 30 15s right there, doesn't it? I didn't have to draw them all because this means just keep on going. Okay? So how would I subtract 1 15? Because that's what minus means, subtract. On this tape diagram, how could I subtract one of those 15s? Any ideas? 30 minus 15. Not really. Not really? Um, yeah. I could erase one of them. What else could I do? You can also yeah. put all Couldn't I just cross it off? Yeah. yeah. So that's how I'm going to show 30 15s minus 1 15. So how many 15s do I have now? 29. 29 15s. And over here I have 29 times 15. It's 16. 29 15s right here. If I were to draw it, wouldn't I draw it the same way? 29 boxes with 15 in each box. Okay. I wanted you to know about this crossing off part because it's on Zerg. Okay. Okay, what else do we have? That's it.